Okay, we're going to go with the great coronamid merger. So this could be fish does a dry, but it's also most effective when the fish are kind of porpoising, taking bugs in the surface. So we're going to start out with our Hanek 530. This is a size 16. Uh, these are I'm usually using these on still water, so the bit, bugs are a bit bigger. So you go uh, 14 or 16, but 16 is the most average size. And the key to this one is going to be the breathers, at least the, the white foam that we'll use on them. Uh, makes them more visible to you, makes the fish trigger on it, I've seen uh, actually on the water. So uh, relatively simple tie. We're just going to start our thread and work our way back to the point of the hook. Now I'll just grab a little section of this opal mirage tinsel. And I'll back that up a little bit towards the back. Uh, kind of where the barb would be if we had a barb and then move forward <clears throat> about halfway between the hook point and the eye and that's where we're going to wrap that a lot of times I'll still use my hackle pliers on these kinds of things helps you not waste material because you can get the uh, you can grab it a little shorter than you can with your fingers and we're just going to wrap that up out to that tie-in point All right, now the body, <clears throat> if you've seen the foam merger pattern, this is kind of the same style of body. We're just gonna use this Easy Magic Dub. It's an awesome, awesome midge body. And I typically like to singe the very end of this. And of course it will only work if you use the famous poop lighter. And you're gonna singe this very lightly. Like that. And I want that extending just barely beyond the bend. And this has a core to it, so you need to make sure it stays on top of the hook, but also uh, doesn't roll on you. So we're just going to do that. And we need to leave enough space there, about a width of the eye, behind the eye, so that we can tie in our other materials. And we're going to dual purpose a material here. This is uh, the uh, trigger point, EP trigger point. These are treated with floatant, so they work great for dry flies or emergers. And so I'm going to get a chunk about yay thick. It doesn't have to be thick. We're going to use this as kind of a wing and an overwing. Uh, just adds some extra flotation to it. So I want that to be a little bit longer than that extended body, not by much. Now just trim those up a bit. Okay, that could be a wing, could be a shuck. That's the nice thing about these midges when they hatch. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of body parts flailing. And I've noticed, like I said, I've seen this on the water happen. I've noticed fish were passing on adults that were actually on the surface to feed on the emerging ones. And if you've seen chronomids, especially in still waters with a little bigger, those breathers are super visible. So we'll build on that here with some foam in a minute. But uh, I'm going to leave this long because we're going to trim this and use it to come off the front of the hook. Now, if you have any experience with coronamids, you know how vital it is to use a special kind of, of uh, eye stub. This is, of course, the UV Shrimp Pink. Old Lance Egan. He's the one that turned us on to this color. And uh, pretty much every fly I tie now has this in it. Well, not everyone. So we don't need much, and this is probably too much. I need enough for probably two wraps, like so. That worked out okay. Strip the rest of that off. Okay, now you can see 
we've got a little bit of bear hook in front of that thorax. And so I'm going to take some Evisote. Same with the foam merger. I think Evisote is an important uh, component of this fly. It floats well, and uh, <clears throat> I've tried other types of foam with this pattern. I think Evisote is the key. So what we'll do is we're going to tie this in kind of at a uh, cross, but one secret to tying in foam like this, and I, I understand there's going to be some waste here, but this is easier to tie in, trust me. So oh, about a shank and a half length, and I want to put that right in the middle and hold it parallel to the hook, and then right in front of where the thorax left off, right behind the, that eye, I'm going to pull and cinch this foam onto it. Okay, now you can simply take and twist that, and voila, it will come off perpendicular. And we'll just take one wrap back through it that way, and then one going forward the other way. And then I'm just going to yank this down. So there we go, little wing buds or breathers. And now I'm just going to pull these up and grab my whip finish and we'll just whip finish this. That's one nice thing about these little Tiemco whip finishers. They really come in handy when you're working in small spaces like this. Now I got one fiber that got loose on me. We'll get him. Trim that off. Now I'm going to get in here and trim that little Dude, here we go. Okay, done. Actually not. So now I'm going to come in and do a couple things. First, I'm going to trim the uh, front overwing. And I just leave that, oh, about a hook eye length long. Maybe a little bit more. Like so. Okay, now we're going to take these two pieces of foam that we just tied in and what I'll do is I'll pull them up and this is why you want this foam to be long like that and again we're gonna waste a little but that's how it goes and I'm gonna come in here and trim them about as long as that uh, the overwing is and if you put tension on them and then we're gonna kinda sh cut in a little bit of an angle up and back It creates a nice little doodad like that. And that's it. This is the Muerto Midge. Has its name for basically this location where we fish it. And uh, super effective. So what you'll do, typically add some floatant in this region on the foam. You don't need to put any floatant back here. For starters, if the fish are barely starting to come up to kind of take emergers, then this will be oriented a little bit more, maybe at a 45 degree or 90 degree angle. And uh, maybe as the hatch progresses, you can get the whole thing floated up and uh, make it float on the surface, in which case this could be the body and the wing. And <clears throat> the nice thing is that white is going to be pretty visible for you. So you should be able to see it fairly well while you fish it. So tie it up. This is a great one to have on any still water where you're going to see fish coming up to or close to the surface. Mm -hmm.